the Barbarian Empire, and I'm Oba the Great. This is your daily guide on how to navigate the Matrix. Let's get to it. This is why nobody trusts Meta. Facebook let Netflix peek into your DMs in explosive new court documents. This is crazy, man. They keep violating privacy laws. Basically, they had the APIs, which is the application program interface, meaning this is how two separate programs can actually speak to each other. They allow the APIs to basically search into Meta's data. They allowed them to do that for the tune of $150 million. Now, they didn't just outright give them $150 million. Netflix actually promised ad money. That's how these social media platforms get paid through ad money. So they promised them $150 million in ad money so they can have access to this type of data. So they would scan keywords inside of your DMs, and that's how you're like, wow, I was just talking about this in the inbox. How come I saw an ad about this? Because they have access to the data. Like I said before, this is why they do not have trust. Consistently, they keep getting caught doing this. That's why people used to call Facebook Fedbook. But I saw in a recent interview, I can't remember the interview, that a person was actually bragging about how all of these social media companies actually come together, have meetings, be on Zoom calls, and talk to each other about how they come together and basically spy. The name of the game is Big Data. That's all this is about, data and information analytics. And your data is sold from various social media platforms in order to sell you things. It's not to come spy you so they can break into your house and come get you if you say something wrong about political opponents and stuff like that. No, we're not in Nazi Germany. It's basically so they can sell you things. Capitalism. Consumerism. So that candy bar company, that soda company, drink company, that restaurant, that food company, they have your data so they can know what time they can sell you things, would you more be interested in strawberry flavor, lemon flavor, things like that. So they can target the ads straight to you. That's all. So a lot of people have like a apocalyptic conspiracy about this. It's not. They just want to sell you things. They want your money. That's it. It could be more sinister things going on. But hey, it is what it is. But this is what's happening. And it's basically out and open now. So they let you actually know in the policy before you, you know, sign on and sign up for the app. They let you know they're doing this and nobody ever reads that because it's so long and you sign up anyway. This is what comes with the game. This is how they make their money. Seems like the government trying to cash in on a little bit of Bitcoin too. The U.S. government transferred $2.1 billion and seized Bitcoin to Coinbase. The $2.1 billion is actually seized from a site called Silk Road. For a lot of people who don't know what Silk Road is... Back in the early days of cryptocurrency, when cryptocurrency just started to get its value, there was a marketplace called Silk Road, ran by a kid named Ross Ubert. Basically, on this marketplace, you can buy anything from pills, powder, drink, people, organs. You can buy whatever on there, and it wouldn't be tracked because it was on Bitcoin. It's on a distributed anonymous ledger. Yes, you can look on a blockchain and see things being bought, but you wouldn't know who was buying it and what was being bought. It's basically the Amazon of the black market. And a lot of and a lot of cypherpunks and kids actually see Ross Ulbricht as a martyr because he was the first person to bring basically freedom onto the internet. Because that's what the internet was supposed to be, interconnected freedom. So you can buy anything, do anything. So when the FBI seized it, everything went under. Now they got him in Florence ADX, I think. Now the government has that marketplace seized. Now they're working with Coinbase, which is a centralized exchange, which will probably be the top one for America. The government got their hand on it and they're showing trust in it. Obviously, it's going to be America first with that. That's why they let you hook your bank into it. That's why they let you transfer debit card spend off of it because it's already controlled already. Usually, when somebody puts cryptocurrency into an exchange, they're ready to sell. Some already say that they already sold the Bitcoin and they're just distributing it to people. Or they're probably going to take a loan out onto it. Or it could be some form of payment. Who knows? We're going to keep an eye on it and see exactly what they do with that Bitcoin. They out here buying voters in front of everybody right in their face. Because this is a tongue twister, I actually got to pull my phone out for this. Swing states net half of $114 billion in Inflation Reduction Act factory investment. Meaning, the states that are the most influential. There we go. I messed it up like five times. Y'all should see the outtakes. Basically, the states that are the most influential are the ones that are getting this money. So, basically... Half of that money went to the most politically important states. They were also stating that the future of IRAs is very key in this year's election. 
I mean, everything that has to do with this whole presidency and the government, all of it's about money. But now it's about the future money, the old heads money. Where is the older people, Gen X? Where is, where is their money going? That's basically what this whole election is about. And most of us that's in cryptocurrency, we know it's coming to us, the millennials and the Gen Z's are in the know of what's going on. That's why they say with this cryptocurrency thing, it's going to be the biggest wealth transfer in human history. There's so many 401ks, bank accounts, and IRAs, and just trust funds that are left there with nobody to claim them. That money has to go somewhere. It has to go back into the pool of people. So the new money is getting held up by the old money. But back to the matter at hand. This is how you pay for voters. They're making sure the money goes to the right people. They make sure the money is going to the states that matter in voting. This is how they get the outcomes that they want. Y'all just going to keep letting these people play in y'all face? NATO proposes a $100 billion five-year fund to the Ukraine. Y'all really going to let these people keep playing in y'all face with y'all money? This ain't even American money. This is NATO money. This is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This is all of our money. All of us that are basically under European rule, which is United States, Europe, and all that. Yes, this is, this is our money. This is all of our money now that they want to send to them over a five-year period. So what does that tell you? That tells you this war is not ending anytime soon. There's going to be no ceasefire because when there's blood on the streets, that's when you make the most money. I think a Rothschild said that. This is all about money. Contracts. Keep the war going so they can make money. So there will be no ceasefire. So there will be no ceasefire anytime soon. Well, at least in the next five years because you see they want to spend $100 billion. They also want to send a weapons shipment to Kiev. I mean, Glock, Smith & Wesson, they, they need to make their money. I mean, it's not enough Americans with enough guns, even though most of most of Americans have two to three guns. It's only 300 million people. They have to send their weapons somewhere. They have to make money. That's a lot of money in private contracting with weapons. Like I said, when war happens, money flows. I kind of see this as a last-ditch effort to make money because we're going to switch to blockchain technology, and you're going to be able to track almost every single transaction. But this is where also Ripple comes into play because they also have private ledgers. So does Monero too. That's actually considered almost a substitute to Bitcoin right now. All I see is these people are trying to make their money so they can become generationally rich before this market switches. And in good old capitalistic fashion, they're doing it all for somebody else's dime. And they're going to keep doing it. Can't vote against it because they're signing executive orders to get it done. And plus, this is actually out of United States jurisdiction. This is NATO doing this. This next topic is about technology, chips, money, United States, and China. China's president is warning Biden that the U.S. is creating their risk by limiting technology. This is their first direct meeting actually since November. So a lot of people don't understand what's going on with the Taiwan situation. From the outside looking in, it just looks like China is just trying to just grab up another Asian country. They see imperialism. They think invading. No, it's over the microchips and semiconductors. I don't know somebody in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they have two semiconductor machines in the world. There's only two of them, I think, in the world, and Taiwan has both of them. Because the next race we're in, it's not an arms race. It's not about gold. It's about microchips because of artificial intelligence. We're in an artificial intelligence race right now. And Taiwan is actually the key within all of this because they actually hold the only two machines. Like I said, fact check me, I'm not sure. But I am sure that they do have the machines that make these semiconductors and chips. Seeing that we're going into the digital age, that is the equivalent of having a literal mountain of gold. The reason why China says it's creating a risk because America has certain bans on selling certain technology to China. And America imposing sanctions on any other countries that try to sell them any type of technology that could advance them over the U.S. And a lot of people are like, well, how does the U.S. impose sanctions? It's because of the U.S. dollar. Almost every country trades with the U.S. dollar. But that's where the BRICS situation come in because those are the countries that are getting off the U.S. dollar standard for the global currency. So they use the money and they use the dollar to basically bully smaller countries that need technology, food, or anything like that. If they do any type of business with China, it has to do with technology or weapons. So now when it comes to Taiwan, they don't want anybody to get hold of this technology to be able to build semiconductors or build any type of microchips that could advance them in this age of AI. Because AI is about to take off to the point that we're almost going to hit the singularity and we're not in it already. And what the singularity is, is when technology moves faster than human learning. 
which is happening because it seems like a new type of AI comes out every single week and people are just trying to catch up and catch up and catch up. We see what Sora is doing to Hollywood. We saw Sora halt billion dollar projects of people trying to build Hollywood studios because now you can just type in an AI prompt and you can have a whole movie scene that looks real. So basically what's going on with a lot of this is over microchips as we see with NVIDIA stock, AMD stock. We are in a digital revolution. That is what's happening, guys. Well, that's all for today. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. The link is in the bio. Also, join our Discord community. That link is also in the bio. Any help that you need with crypto, finance, tech, AI, gaming, whatever. So I'll be there to help you. See you guys tomorrow.